All right, so welcome to lesson six in our series on decimal fractions. Today we're going to be talking about equivalent tenths and hundreds. And now remember, from our <coughs> excuse me, from our last lesson of decimals and money, that we know that one tenth. Oops, let me put that on my pen. That one tenth is also equivalent to ten hundredths. If you remember our lesson from talking about pennies and their relationship to dimes. So that is going to be something very important. Looking at this in fractional terms, that one-tenth is also going to be equivalent to ten hundredths. Because remember the one thing that we talked about a little while ago when we were talking about simplifying fractions? Well, we can simplify decimals as well, especially if they're in fractional form. So, let's talk a, real quickly about why these two are going to be equivalent, and then we're going to look at some pictures. So, if I list all of my factors of 10, let me put a little line between this. Well, 1 times, times 10, 2 times 5. Now, list all of my factors of 100. That's 1 times 100, 2 times 50, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, 10 times 10. Oh, hold on, I messed that up just a little bit. Let me fix that. 10. And what we look and we see that our greatest common factor, our GCF, is 10. So if we divide 10 hundredths, divide the numerator and the denominator by 10, well 10 divided by 10 is 1, and 100 divided by 10 is 10. So that's more mathematical proof that 1 tenth is also equivalent to 10 hundredths. Now let's look at that and let's investigate that pictorially. So if I shade in, let me change this color again. If I shade in this entire area right here. Now, I shaded in so far one tenth. Now if I shade in here the same area, one, two, three, four. So if I shade in this same amount of space, and right now I shaded in 10 out of 100. But when you look at these, that both of these occupy the same amount of space. So you can write 10 hundredths as 1 tenth. Or you can write 1 tenth as 10 hundredths. So when I write this in standard form, I can write this as 0 decimal 1 zero, or... I can write this as 0 decimal 1. Either way that I write these, they're going to be exactly the same. Now the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a little step further and add some expanded notation in that, in that as well. So this time I'm going to shade some more stuff in here. Now this is only works if you have whole strips shaded. Let me go and get this shaded in here. And this is going to be our last example before I end this lesson. Now so what I have shaded here on the left hand side is three tenths or three tenths. On this other side what I have shaded in is thirty hundredths or zero decimal three zero. Again both of these are still going to be equivalent to each other because they take up the same amount of space. 
And so you can write both of these exactly the same. Because remember that once you get behind that decimal point, that that is still a space to represent that I have three tenths and no hundredths, or that I have thirty hundredths. Either way, three tenths, thirty hundredths, they are going to be equivalent to each other. And that is the end of our lesson on equivalent tenths and hundredths.